Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we will understand the concept of degree of freedom in structural equation modeling. Sometimes when you run a model in SPSS MS, it will give you a warning, which you can see in the blue color. The warning is the model is probably under identified. In order to achieve identifiability, it will be probably necessary to impose one additional constraint. This warning is related to the degree of freedom. Let's try to understand the concept of degree of freedom. In structural equation modeling, the term degree of freedom refers to the number of independent pieces of information available to estimate the parameters of the model. In SAM, a model consists of set of observed variables and latent variables that are unobserved variables that are linked together through a system of structural equations. The parameters of the model are estimated by comparing the observed data with the predicted covariance matrix based on the model. Let's try to understand the degree of freedom with a very simple example. The example here we are considering is of the cricket. There are 11 players and 11 fielding positions. So for the captain, for the first player, the captain has to decide for the first player where his or her fielding position will be. So for the first player, the captain has got the 11 degree of freedom. The player can be placed at any, any one out of the 11 positions. But once the first player is placed, for the second player, the degree of freedom is now only 10. One less. Now, uh, all the players are placed. One by one. All the players are placed one by one. And the last player is left. So for the last player, the captain does not have any degree of freedom. No option left. Only one fielding position is left and the captain does not have any choice of choice left. So for the last player, the degree of freedom is zero. It means that the degree of freedom is my is one less. This means that the degree of freedom is equal to number of players minus one. The same concept we will try to understand in a very simple mathematics example. Suppose we want to find the average of three number. Let's call them x1, x2 and x3. We can calculate the average by adding up the three numbers and dividing the sum by three like this average of x. Average is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by three. Now let's say we have the target average in mind which is 30. So we set up the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3 is 30. In this case we have the freedom to choose any values for x1, x2 and x3 as long as their average is equal to 30. But once we fix the values of x1 and x2 we don't have any choice for x3. For example x1 is equal to 45 and x2 is equal to 25. So to achieve the target average of 30 it is necessary that x3 should be 20. We don't have any degree of freedom. To summarize in this example, when we fix the values of any two numbers in order to achieve a specific average, the value of the third number is no longer free to vary. The degree of freedom is equal to the number of variables minus 1. In the previous case, we had seen the degree of freedom is equal to number of players minus 1, which means we lose one degree of freedom for each fixed value in our equation. What is the concept of under identified model? x plus y is equal to 8. Find the value of x and y. It is not possible to solve this equation as we have only one equation x plus y is equal to 8, which is not enough to determine the unique values for both x and y. As a result, there are infinitely many possible solutions that satisfy the equation. An under-identified model refers to the mathematical model where the number of equations, we are having only one equation, is less than the number of unknown variables. Unknown variables are 2, x and y. In the given equation, x plus y is equal to 8. We have only one known, one equation and two unknowns, x and y. Therefore, the model is under-identified because the number of equation is insufficient to determine the values of all the variables uniquely. Just identified model. x plus y is equal to 8. 2x plus 3y is equal to 19. Find the value of x and y. 
we can get the value of x and y as for two unknowns x and y we are having two knowns two linear equations this is known as just identified model the concept of degree of freedom and identification of model we will use here say for example satisfaction is a construct which is captured with the help of two uh, indicator variables that is a and b Basically, A and B are the statements which have been captured on Likert scale from your respondents. So, how to calculate the degree of freedom in this model? So, your degree of freedom is equal to number of known minus number of unknown. A and B are the statements. And as they are statements which have been captured from the respondents, the, that is, their opinions have been captured on Likert scale. So, we can definitely calculate their variances. So, variances of A. That is a statement A, variance of statement B. Moreover, we can also calculate their covariances, covariance of C, A, B. So, the number of known is variance of A, variance of B and covariance between A and B, that is C, A, B. So, three known. How many unknowns are there? Factor loading E1, factor loading E2, error term E A, error term E B. These, these are unknowns. So, four unknowns. The degree of freedom is 3 minus 4 is equal to minus 1. This means that this is under identified model. Now let's uh, introduce one more indicator here. A, B and C. Number of knowns we will calculate for first. Variance of A, variance of B, variance of C. Variance of, uh, sorry, covariance of A and C is indicated by CAC. Covariance of AB, CAB, covariance of BC, that is CBC. How many knowns are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Number of unknowns, the factor loading E1, E2, E3, and the error terms EA, EB, EC. So, 6 unknown. The degree of freedom is equal to 6 minus 6 is equal to 0. Now, let us take one more case where we are introducing the fourth indicator that is a D. We will calculate the degree of freedom here also. So, degree of freedom is equal to number of known minus number of unknown. Variance of A, variance of B, variance of C, variance of D is known. Moreover, their covariance is covariance AD. Covariance AC, covariance AB, covariance uh, BD, covariance BC, covariance CD. So we are having 10 known 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 10 knowns are there. The unknowns are Factor loading E1, E2, E3, E4. Error terms EA, EB, EC and ED. 8 unknown. The degree of freedom is 8 minus 6. Uh, so, the degree of freedom is uh, 10 minus 8 is equal to 2. This means that it is an over identified model. In the previous case, we had seen under identified and just identified models. So, let us proceed further. Okay. The total number of variances and covariances is also known as a number of distinct elements uh, into bracket, the knowns. So, how it is calculated? Let us try to understand in the tabular format. A, B, C and D. A, B, C, D. So, variance A, variance B, variance C and variance D and the covariances among them. So, these are all knowns. So, the total number of measured variables A, B, C, D are there. So, number of distinct elements which are known is equal to number of variances plus number of covariances. So, the number of distinct elements are 4 A, B, C, D plus the number of covariances. 4 A, B, C, D means we had seen in the previous case 4 variances and 6 covariances are known. So, total is 10. The total number of measured variables if it is P, we want to generalize it. So, the number of distinct elements known is equal to number of variances plus number of covariances. So, the number of distinct elements P plus P minus 1 upon T 
So my generalized will be the knowns will be the number of distinct elements will be p into p plus 1 upon 2. So let us calculate now. If I am having four measured variable, four indicators, how many distinct elements will be there? So 4 plus 4 into 4 minus 1 upon 2, 10 distinct elements will be there. Basically, these are 10 knowns. So the generalized form. Now, the number of frame parameters to be estimated, these are unknowns. So, we have seen that if we are having four measured variable, the number of free parameters will be E1, E2, E3, E4 and their error terms EA, EB, EC and ED. So, eight free parameters are there which are unknowns. So, if K is less than P into P plus 1 upon 2, it is over identified model. If it is equal to, then it is exactly identified model. And if it is greater than, then it is under identified model. Let's see our case. As number of distinct elements, the known ones, 10, is greater than number of free parameters, unknown, 8, which are to be estimated. So our model is over identified. The degree of freedom is equal to number of unique variants and covariants, knowns, minus number of free parameters to be estimated, unknowns. The generalized formula we have already seen. So if there are two constructs, three knowns are there. If there are if there are two items, sorry, if there are two items per construct, three knowns are there. If there are three items per construct, six knowns are there. Let's try to calculate the degree of freedom for this path model. The degree of freedom is equal to number of distinct elements in the covariance matrix minus the number of free parameters to be estimated. One, two, three. 4 and 5. <coughs> Their variances can be calculated. So p into p plus 1 divided by 2. So 5 into 6 divided by 2 is equal to 15. So these are known. Unknowns are a to d, b to d, c to d, d. Four regression coefficients are to be estimated. Five variances a, b, c, d, e. Three pair of covariances. A, B, A, C, and B, C. Now, let's do the total of this. 1, 2, 3, 4. And this 5. 5 plus 4, 9. 9 plus 3. 9 plus 3, 12. 12. So, 15 minus 12. The degree of freedom is 15 minus 12 is 3. Let's calculate the degree of freedom for this factor model. Measured variables are Measured variables are 6, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6. 4 is not there. So, 6 are there. 2 factors are there. F1 and F2. So, first we will calculate the distinct elements. 6 are there. So, the generalized formula is P into P plus 1 divided by 2. So, 6 into 6 plus 1 divided, divided by 2 is 21. Next is 2p, 2 into p, so 2 into 6, 12 uh, model parameters are to be estimated, which are basically the error terms and the factor loadings. How these are 12? Let's try to understand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 error terms, they are factor loadings. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 plus 6, 12. The next part is f into f minus 1 divided by 2. Two factors are there. So how many covariances are uh, exist among them? The formula is 2 into 2 minus 1 divided by 2. One covariance is there. So the degree of freedom is 21 minus 12 minus 1. 8 degree of freedom is there. Right? Now let's try to understand the same thing in MS. I will draw the diagram here. So, one construct is represented by two measured variable. And let's calculate the degree of freedom here. You will get degree of freedom is equal to minus 1. Let's try to check it. When we have done it manually, is it the same thing or not? You can see here the degree of freedom is minus 1. Now we will include one more indicator variable and again calculate the degree of freedom. 
one more again analyze degree of freedom now the degree of freedom is zero so we will see the next slide the degree of freedom is zero right let's include one more indicator variable analyze degree of freedom is two so let's check in our in our slide 10 minus 8 is equal to 2 so this is a way we can calculate the degree of freedom now what are the consequences of degree of freedom on our model it is always advisable to have a over identified model the last case in case of just identified model conflicting results are seen between the model fit indices that is cfi ifi nfi tli and C mean divided by degree of freedom as well as RMSCA. Contradictory results will be seen. In case of just identified model, above indices will show good fit, but C mean upon degree of freedom and RMSCA will show the poor fit. Moreover, in case of just identified model, that is DF is equal to zero, the comparative fit index starts to inflict. So this was all about a degree of freedom in structural equation modeling for more videos on SPSS I most kindly subscribe to my channel you can see my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos on SPSS MS you can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter please don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the like button